Guys, 5x5 five five Goblin Caves means more AP and more money to be made. So I wanted to share the love with the Bards today and teach you how to kill both the Cyclops and the Cave Troll at level 1. If you're not a Bard player but you play another melee based class like the Fighter, Barbarian or even the Cleric and Ranger, then everything in this guide will help you with learning how to melee both the Cave Troll and the Cyclops. And you can ignore all of the information regarding songs, perks and skills and just focus on the technique which is the meleeing portion of this video hopefully you guys enjoy okay so let's get started and make ourselves a level one bar this one is called like this video I'm watching you. Okay, let's get into it. And there's actually a lot of setup for Bard if you want to have the most optimal solo boss killing loadout in Goblin Caves. So let's head over to the class tab to get that started. And we'll start with our perk. Let's get rid of Law Mastery. We don't want regular interaction speed as our perk. There's so many perks that could help us out as a level one Bard, but I think one stands out above the rest and I'll get to it in a second. But let me talk about the other options and what they do. We have the Mudder, which gives us five resourcefulness, which makes our buffs and debuffs last longer. So that's pretty useful. We have Rapier Mastery, which gives us a two weapon damage increase and a 5% action speed increase when using a Rapier, which is Bard's default weapon. Then there is Storyteller, which gives us knowledge and will. Particularly useful if we want to bring more songs as a level one Bard. Wanderer's Luck is sometimes used by people who just care about getting 50 plus luck and care about getting higher quality loot from the pile and the bosses. War Song is useful when you play lots of songs during a boss fight such as Streak of Weakness because that gives you weapon damage. But I think that one song stands out above the rest and that is Charismatic Performance as that is going to allow us to purposely skip notes when playing songs and still get a perfect performance. And as we're going to be playing songs like Streak of Weakness during the boss fight, it is going to be painful. We have to wait for every note. It's just better to have those simple notes so that we can get back to DPSing the bosses as much as possible. As far as skills are concerned, we're going to unequip dissonance and bring both music memories as we want to have as many song choices available to us as possible. So let's unequip all these songs and I will tell you which songs you should focus on for level one boss killing. Rousing Rhythms is your bread and butter. It's going to give you plus two all attributes, allowing you to have more strength, more attack speed, more movement speed, more health, literally everything. It is perfect. And then Beats of Alacrity is your second choice as that gives you movement speed as well. Uh, we want to bring Aria of Alacrity. That gives us an 8% action speed buff, which equates to faster attack speed. Then we bring Ballad of Courage, which gives us 10 physical power, making us stronger at level 1. Shriek of Weakness is our fifth song option, as that will reduce the physical power and armor rating of our target, such as the boss, which allows us to kill it much quicker, especially with that additional physical power from Ballad of Courage. And then we want to bring a Harmonic Shield, which gives us armor rating and magic resistance. Particularly useful if we get hit during the rock fall phase by the Cyclops, as that will reduce the damage taken. The final song choice is Tranquility, and as you can see, it is grayed out, but due to the plus two or rousing rhythms, we will be able to play this song. If you do manage to kill the Cyclops at level one, chances are you took damage during the rock fall. So let's get our health back using Tranquility. I think it's just really useful, especially when you don't have many meds available to you. Other song choices that you might want to equip just in case you find some knowledge out there in the dungeons are Accelerando, which gives you movement speed, and Allegro, which gives you action speed, so attack speed. Really useful to play both these songs before a fight and then rush on in. And then the final song choice, Lament of Lengor uh, is perfect against Barbarians or just any class really. It slows them down. Uh, or Song of Silence is pretty good as well. If you're running into lots of wizards, clerics, and warlocks, as you can essentially silence them when you get close to them and then kill them before they can retaliate. So those are your song suggestions, but do remember that you only need these songs here for the boss fight to have the best chance of killing any of the bosses at level one. Now, before we jump into a game and start boss killing, remember you can head to the merchants tab and switch out your base gear using the squire. This is really useful, especially because you start with a rapier that has 20 weapon damage, but the falchion has 32 base damage. So it's actually going to be much more useful to us in a fight. Plus we can bring a buckler, which gives us armor rating, which equates to physical damage reduction 
which will keep us alive during the rock fall phase, for example. Uh, we can switch our Wanderer's Attire out for an Adventurous Tunic since it's faster movement speed. Give ourselves some heavy boots for more movement speed as well. And then as far as the utility items are concerned, I would always recommend that you put a drinkable or bandage into the top left corner, whether it be a protection potion, healing potion, or bandage, because you are going to fill the rest of your slots with instruments, but you can always right click stuff from your inventory into the top left corner. And so by reserving the top left corner for some form of drinkable or bandage, then you're going to be able to apply that very quickly in a fight when necessary. As far as the rest of the order is concerned, that's up to you. But my preference is drum, then bandage. Uh, I would definitely bring a bandage at level one and a potion of healing because you're going to need to use those in the fight most likely. Uh, as far as the other in instruments are concerned, uh, lyre, then loot, then flute will give me my optimal song order, which I'm going to recommend in the boss fight. Equip that base gear. Head on over and let's jump into High Roller and learn these bosses. The Cyclops is situated in the northwest of the map. Two across and two down in this module here. Okay, here we are at the Cyclops cave. And guys, this is the hardest boss to learn in the game. The Cyclops has 6,900 health. It's basically triple that of a cave troll. And due to the fact that his rock four phase is a damage check, learning this boss at level one is deadly. It requires a time perfect jump to avoid the rocks. That jump happens one second after he hits the ground with his club for the first and half a second after he hits the ground for every attack afterwards. And then when the cycle repeats, you're back to one second again. So with that in mind, learning this boss at level one is going to be very tricky. This guide will show that it's possible, but I just wanted to say that before we started because I feel like a lot of players will get frustrated learning this boss at level one, dying to the rock four stage often. Uh, it just gives you a really good fundamental understanding of the boss so that you can then equip gear, be much more stronger, tankier, and do more damage to get through that rock phase stage much quicker. Thankfully, the rest of Cyclops' attacks are really easy to learn. All you have to do is move to the right to dodge them. Or if you're really close to him and slowed, for example, you can also crouch jump to the right to avoid them. And then he has four special attacks that you need to learn how to dodge. The first is a ground stomp. When he goes for the ground stomp, you just need to move away from him. If you're too close to him, he will insta-kill you. Uh, and if you're kind of close to him, then he will slow you, which is where that crouch jump comes in handy. The second attack is a eyeball petrify, where he will turn you into stone. It's really easy to dodge. Just run right past him until the attack finishes, and then you are good to start attacking him again. The third is a charge where he does two low attacks and then a high attack. And you just have to jump the first two attacks and then crouch the third one to get past him. And the fourth is a blind. Now, keep in mind with the blind, if you're too close to him and you dodge to the right, you will be hit by his club doing a lot of damage. So it's usually best to be a little bit far away from him. And to dodge the blind, just run to the right and you should be able to avoid it. However, if you do get hit by the blind, it's not the end of the world, okay? The song order that we need to apply before the boss fight and actually during the boss fight after every rock phase is this. Rousing Rhythms into Aria of Alacrity, followed by Ballad of Courage and Harmonic Shield. Then we get our Aria of Alacrity. And then we pull Shriek of Weakness out and we want to aggro the Cyclops to the northwest corner like this. And then wait for him to get close and then apply Shriek of Weakness whilst moving to the right to avoid his attacks. And then we just go to the right for all of his attacks. Aim for headshots where you can, chest shots where you can't go for the head. And don't get hit because you are going to regret it. In the off chance you do get hit, like I did, you'll notice that your health is all grey. So you can apply Tranquility and go again. Alright, and once you're back to full health, reapply your buffs and go again. Okay, round two, let's do this. Shriek of Weakness in the northwest corner. Don't miss those skill checks or else you'll miss the Shriek of Weakness. There we go. Headshots where we can. And just move to the right. Moving to the right is definitely the safest. Jumping is viable, but it's a lot easier to get hit. A lot easier to mess up a jump than it is just to move to the right. But you can kind of combine two if you want to. This should be a, an eyeball pierce. I'm going to reapply my uh, Shriek of Weakness very soon. Just waiting for the special attack that is going to come afterwards. I thought it would be a stomp, but it worked out to be a uh, charge. 
We might get a stomp afterwards. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Rock four will come very shortly. It's probably going to come in... Either after this little attack or the next attack. We have rock four. So let's get a couple of headshots in. Wow, he's going really for it. Headshot as much as we can and let's get behind him. Wait a full second and then jump. Half a second and then jump. Half a second and jump. Trigger weakness ended. So we're going to have to do two more attacks to get through this. It's going to be a one second jump. Perfect. Holy crap. That was very scary. Reapply our buffs after every rock fall, guys. So that was a, a long rock fall, a longer rock fall than normal because our shriek of weakness expired during the rock fall. Which meant we had to do more attacks, which meant we risked more times that we could die. That's why damage checks are really punishing to level one characters. And with more gear, you can get through it much quicker. So let's try and be on top of our shriek of weakness this time around. Good. Dodge the eye. Wait for the second attack. Never crouch jump this, by the way. Because you can get stuck underneath him. And then you don't uh, have the opportunity to jump afterwards. So just a little tip. Never crouch jump the charge. Let's reapply streak. Perfect. All right. Hopefully he goes straight into rock four here. Perfect. And we got our streak weakness applied. One full second. We got hit. Let's go for a half second jump. Oh, we got hit again. No. We had a perfect round. This time it's looking like we're going to take some damage. Let's get some cheeky hits in before he does his ground stomp. And then we'll go for our heals here. He went for a uh, overhead attack anyway. That's fine. We're going to get our heals in. We're going to refresh our buffs. Definitely don't want to get hit by that whilst refreshing buffs. It'll make refreshing the buffs so much more annoying. <laughs> Possible, but annoying. We can just stand still whilst doing this one. Oh dear, I got hit. That is not good. I jumped way too late. Alright, there's a shriek. Well, we have done so well up until this point to get through the rock falls. There's only one more rock fall left. So hopefully we can get through it and say goodbye to the Cyclops. Here comes the Shriek. Whack him in the back. Getting ready to move away from him because of the ground stomp. Getting ready to reapply with Shriek of Weakness as well before the rock fall phase starts. Let's dodge this blind by just moving off to the right. A couple hits in whilst we do it. Headshot, headshot should be a Shriek of Weakness reset, I think. Makes the most sense so that we have it for the entirety of the rock fall phase coming up now. Here we go. Last one, guys. One big jump. Half a second. You can do this. Two more attacks. One more attack. Yes. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Ah, oh, it is such a lovely feeling to get through all of the rock fours. And now we can just ride it home. Shriek of weakness. Reapply it. Make sure we do it nice and safe. No need to risk anything. A headshot here. And the Cyclops is dead. Guys, it is very tricky to kill this guy. And we are going to immediately die for it, unfortunately. So, why don't we just cut to the cave troll? The cave troll is situated in the southeast corner of the map. Four across and four down in this module here with all those bridges and the elevator. Okay, the cave troll is probably the easiest boss to learn, but one of the scariest due to all of his attacks basically being a one-shot attack. What we need to learn about the uh, cave troll is that we are basically just going to dodge around him to the right anti-clockwise and only go for two attacks per swing on him. Depending on which attack animation that is will de uh, determine which part of the body we aim for. Usually it's going to be head or hand. After every fourth attack phase, he is going to do a ground slam, which we need to move away from. And after every two ground slams, we will reset his shriek of weakness. Thankfully for our song buffs, we can pretty much just apply them once and we're good to go. And that's going to be at the start of the fight. So let's start with a rousing rhythms into a beat of alacrity, followed up by ballad of courage and harmonic shield. Then we do our Aria of Alacrity. 
get our streak of weakness ready and then aim at his right hand in case he does a roar. He hasn't, so we move away as soon as he goes for the attack. Let's apply a good streak of weakness. This is his first attack we need to learn. It's the drunken sailor and you just crouch under it. When he does a attack offering his head, we go for a headshot into a handshot. Like so, headshot, handshot. And there is the first of the ground slams. One more and then we'll reapply our streak. So that's a headshot into a handshot. This one we just do for a single handshot. And then when he ends his animation, we go for another handshot. Single handshot, and we can go for a second if he ends his animation. Otherwise, what happens is, sometimes he'll combo that into a ground slam, and we will get hit by the AoE. So, we now need to reapply Streak of Weakness. That ground slam there does AoE damage. You do not want to be close to him when he does that. And that's why we always do a single until he finishes his animation, so that we're not getting hit by the ground slam at all. Perfect. Move away, move back in. Go for the single hand shot. Drunken Sailor, so we can go for a leg shot. And then duck under and head shot, arm shot. I've gone for a second attack there. And I would have taken an AoE damage if he went for the uh, attack. Just to keep that in mind. Alright. Let's get our Shriek of Weakness ready. Since this is the second cycle. Move to the right whilst we do it. There it is. That's sometimes what happens. And you will get hit by AoE if you go for two attacks. Like so. We can go for a third there. Perfect. Drunken Sailor. Chest shot. Look down. Crouch. And then head shot. Arm shot out of it. And there we go. Perfect. I think we need to reapply Shriek of Weakness. When he roars, you just run right past him. And you're good. Move away from him so you don't get hit by any of his attacks. And then one swing. Go for a second since he's ended. There's that AoE damage I was talking about. Definitely don't want to get hit by that if we can help it. And that happens when we're too close. So we can pop a potion as we run back towards him here. Just one single attack. Headshot. Missed it. Arm shot. Headshot. Arm shot. Headshot. Arm shot. And then this is going to be a ground slam. So we need to reapply our Shriek of Weakness as it has ended. The streak of weakness, by the way, is that purple haze. Always looking at that purple haze. There's the ground slam, so we can do two attacks here. Another two attacks. And he's going for a ground slam. Get nice and close. He's getting really close to death now, guys. Only a couple more attacks left until he dies. And as you see, we're just rotating to the right. And being really patient and attacking based on his animations. And that's it. That's the cave troll. Pretty stress-free, honestly. Amazing. A troll's blood and a troll's pelt. Amazing loot. So, I hope this guide gave you all of the necessary information to kill either the Cyclops or the cave troll. Hopefully both as a bard or even just as a melee class in general. Fighters, barbarians, rangers, and clerics. The information is all there for you as well. Just remember that Bard's Shriek of Weakness and Ballad of Courage makes him way better at killing these bosses at level 1. But if you can do the dance as a melee class, then you can do the bosses as well. And that information is very, very valuable. Guys, I have more guides up on my channel. Warlock players, this is how you do the Cyclops and the Cave Troll as a Warlock. And because you have Hellfire and Torture Mastery, honestly, it's way easier.